Hello and thanks for joining us here at Annex Dinner Table. My name is Cassandra and today we will weave the woefully worrisome story of our family. They live in a sad, desolate place where their single small, small joy in this world is having the most miserable life. Gloom 2nd Edition is distributed by Atlas Games and created by Keith Baker. It is a 2-5 to five player card based storytelling game with transparent cards that can let past actions continue to haunt you or cover them up with new actions. Setup is quite easy with this game. Have everyone choose the family and color they want to be a part of and lay those cards in front of you. If playing with four players, each player discards one of their family members back to the box. Or, if playing with five players, they are adopted by the fifth player into a misfit family. Set the two reference cards out so the players can see them. Put any remaining family cards back into the box then shuffle the deck and set it face down in the middle of the table. Starting with the player who's had the most miserable day, everyone will draw five cards to form their starting hand. That's it! <coughs> On your turn, you will make two plays, and then draw back up to your hand limit of five. <coughs> there are five plays. Play a modifier. This can be either of your plays. Place a modifier on any character that is alive. The transparency of these cards allows for modifier cards to be stacked, continuously hiding old values while adding new ones. These cards will change the self-worth of the character. Normally you will want to play positive self-worth cards on your opponent's family while playing negative self-worth cards on your own family. They may also have this symbol, denoting an immediate effect. That effect will be on the player whose family it is. Play an untimely death. This has to be your first play unless it's used as a free play caused by another card. Stacking an untimely death card on a character with a negative self-worth causes them to die. Happy people don't get to die in gloom. Play an event. This can be either of your plays. You will play an event card from your hand and resolve its effect immediately, then discard that card. Discard your hand. You can do this as either action. You will discard your entire hand. However, you will not get new cards until the draw phase of your turn, so I'm not sure why you would do this as your first action. Pass. If you want, you can pass on either one or both of your plays in a turn. Draw back up to the hand limit. Unless it's been modified, your hand limit is 5 and is, is a minimum. If by playing cards, you end up with more than your hand limit, you keep all of the cards, just foregoing drawing back up until you are lower than your hand limit. In the base game, you have three types of effects. Immediate, response, or continuous. They are denoted on the cards with these symbols. An immediate effect gets resolved immediately with the word you or your, referencing the player whose family it is. A response effect lets you play a card on another player's turn as a response to their play, like canceling an event card as it's played. Continuous effects remain in effect as long as that text is visible. The game ends immediately when all of one player's characters have died. You will add up the self-worth of only your dead characters. Whoever's family lived the most miserable lives or who had the lowest self-worth score is the winner. This game has simple mechanics but at its heart is a storytelling game. You and your friends are put in charge of telling the story of your family. What led them to get swindled by a salesman? What was the salesman selling? You can add as much or as little detail as you like. You're now ready to play Gloom. This is a fun one we take with us wherever we go. 
especially family trips. It doesn't take a lot of space to set up and is fun with people of all ages. Let us know what games you like to take on family trips down in the comments.